Now, there is a notion uh, that uh, I I started uh, reading about that was echoing that was echoing in the in the early nineteen eighties. Yeah, in the early nineteen eighties, and it came to to the nineteen uh, to the two thousands and all that nineteen nineties, where a lot of uh, some theologians they started arguing about the word amen. And uh, most of the theologians, they started saying, uh, Amen is not actually uh, say, so be it. It is, Amen is a sun god, something related to Egypt. And it's, it's, it's an Egyptian god. Uh, his name was Amen. And uh, they quoted scripture to say, Amen. You see that uh, the, the, the quoted scripture of uh, Jesus going through Egypt. Uh, when he was uh, young, I'll call my son out of Egypt and all that. So they, they quoted that to say that is where the uh, the Amen uh, issue comes from. But uh, yeah, they had that debate uh, of which that was in their era. But I'm looking at our era as well. Uh, our era, we don't have um, Christians that have knowledge so far. We have baby Christians that say words. They don't even know what they mean. Uh, just because uh, a certain man of God said it, they take it to be the true gospel. And it's killing a lot of people. And this is lack of uh, wisdom and lack of knowledge. And I, I, I don't see it fit. If you're going to be a Christian, be knowledgeable. Be knowledgeable of your words. Be knowledgeable of the Bible. Where is this word used? What is it used? If it means you're going back to the Hebrew context, uh, to the Hebrew scriptures and the scrolls and all that, go back. Go and do see the direct translation of a word for you to understand. Not just because a pastor has said it in a stylish way and you take it as the true gospel. That is, uh, that is wrong. A true Christian is going to verify what he's reading. A true Christian will even verify the Bible itself. You see, you need to verify what you are believing. Okay, if you're a Christian, you need to verify that the God that you're serving, he is who he says he is. Because even God says, come, test me. Prove me. Come on, I'm here. Why? Because God wants us to be, to be knowledgeable of who he is. He wants us to be knowledgeable of his power. He wants us to be knowledgeable of his loving kindness. He wants us to be knowledgeable of his, the way he is. You understand? He doesn't want people that don't know him. He wants people that know him so that he can have a personal relationship with them. That is why you find that so many Christians, they are loving the pastor more than they're loving God. They obey a pastor more than they obey God. They, they, they understand a pastor more than they understand the word of God itself. Why? Lack of knowledge, lack of reading, lack of uh, research. You see, I, I had an argument uh, with my son. Not an argument, basically. My son threw a question to me. He said, so Jesus, when he was my age, what did he do? Uh, didn't he just disobey his parents? And then I, I was frank with him. I said, you know what? Jesus, the only thing I saw is him arguing with, uh, with the elders, with scripture. You know, he read. So which means Jesus spent time reading when he was young. He spent time reading the scrolls, understanding the scrolls, understanding the word of God. Yet he was the word of God, but he's begun to read and understand. Why? Why? Wisdom of this flesh is important. The flesh needs to understand the word of God. And we need Christians that can do that. You see, and my son was like, so even me, I'm supposed to now understand the word of God. I'm like, my son, you're supposed to study the word of God. The Holy Spirit will cause you to understand. He was like, oh yeah, okay, that's even much better. So me, I just need to read and study the word of God and the Holy Spirit will do everything for me. I was like, begin from there. You see, I'm installing that software of saying study. You see, today many Christians, when they say amen, they don't know what they're saying. They don't know. Ah, brother so-and-so has passed away. Amen. What are you saying amen to? This and that and that. Amen. I got a bima. Amen. I got married for the third time. Amen. God has blessed me with money. Amen. Uh, anyway, what are you saying amen to? 
You get it? What is amen? You see, I need Christians that will challenge amen. What is amen? Don't just say amen. You understand? Begin to understand what is the A-M-E-N. What is it? Where does it come from? Why is it used in any way? When you read the scriptures, you find that God will be like, he says a sentence, cursed is this man who does this and that and that and that and that. And the people will say, Amen. You get it? Blessed be the this and that and that and that and that. And the people will say, Amen. What is the Amen? You get it, right? You be, you need to begin to understand. Not just because the pastors will start saying, I will church aside. Amen. And everybody say, Amen. I will prophesy. Amen. Hey, hold up. Hold up. What are you saying, Amen to? We need to have Christians that are knowledgeable. We need to have Christians that have wisdom. We need to have Christians that are strong in the word, that challenge even the word itself. When the word is spoken, they go back and do research. We need those Christians. You know, gone are the days where the Christian, everybody believed what uh, the pastor said. No, pastors can make mistakes. I've seen pastors misquote scripture. I have, I have seen many of them put a, a wrong scripture and the meaning is totally different and the people will be like, this was powerful. Why? They say powerful because they don't even have time to research. When a pastor preaches, write down the scriptures and what he's saying. Go back home and go through that script, that, 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 that sermon and begin to understand what he was preaching. Because most of the times when we preach, we actually preach to ourselves 90%. You get it? It's not you, believe me. It is us. We get this word 100%. So, Christians, stop taking everything that the men of God say. Stop taking everything that, that prophets say. You understand? A lazy man doesn't work. He doesn't have even um, the chance of working. He doesn't have any qualification. He doesn't even have anything. And then the, the, the prophet comes say, next week I'm seeing you money. Miracle money in your account. Number three, he doesn't even have an account. And then everybody screams, amen, amen. Okay, let's start again. This man doesn't work, right? God doesn't bless, doesn't bless lazy hands. Huh? God never blesses lazy hands. This man doesn't work. And then you go and say, I see money coming your way. How is that money going to come? Okay, this man doesn't even have any papers because he ran away from, from class when it was, it was only break time and he didn't finish his, his school. And you say he's going to have a, a, a managerial uh, what is this, position. How? Because you need learned people in power so that they can bring the glory of God and they can bring the wisdom of God into a company. How can you employ somebody who's not learned? And then you say miracle money. It doesn't even have an account. How is it going to get that miracle money? That is, uh, that is, that is, that is witchcraft. Witchcraft in itself. We need people with wisdom now. We don't need people who have got no wisdom. We don't need pastors who've got no wisdom. They just want to uh, poke on people because they can say, ah, can I prophesy? Can I do this? That is nonsense. We need to get away from that feeble saying of words. Can I prophesy? Can I chichisai? Can I whatever? Go deeper. Who? Which deeper are you talking about? Stop it. You understand? Stop playing with people's lives. Stop saying, can I prophesy? Can I do this? No, who, who are you asking to prophesy? If God has spoken, speak. You don't need man's permission. If God is saying, can you speak my word? You don't need man's permission to say, can I prophesy? No. You go on ahead and speak because God has commanded you to. We need to get away from this nonsense really i'm calling it nonsense because it's too much people are dying in sin and it's not a game anymore people are going to hell and it's not a game anymore it is something that we need to deal with we need to teach people the word of god we need to teach them repentance number one a man has to repent number two a man has to acknowledge jesus as his lord and personal savior number three a man has to relive a righteous life you need to be righteous you need to live a righteous life and that's how now you can start saying oh wanting all these thing, other things you get it let's stop let's stop killing people men of god you answer to Jesus one day. You will answer to Jesus with what you're saying. 
You will stand before the great king himself who died for these people. You will stand before the great king and he will look at you with fire in his eyes and he's going to say to you, get away, you waker of iniquity. I never knew you. And you're going to say to him, well, I prov I chichisied. I I said deeper. I I was the one screaming, Prophet, can I prophesy? It is me, Lord. God will be like, I never knew you. Get away from me, you worker of iniquity. I don't need you. Because this thing is too much. People are dying, and you're busy saying, Can I prophesy? No. If God has given you the word to speak to his people, speak. You need no permission from no man. You need no permission from anybody. Just go ahead and speak and the Holy Spirit will back you up and the word of God will back you up. You understand? People, you are the ones causing all these fake prophets and even the original prophets are falling for the same trap. You are causing them to do this because of even you, your lack of knowledge, lack of understanding. Stop chasing miracles. Stop chasing, uh, can I prophesy? Stop chasing, I see money with you. I see a husband. I see a what? I see this. Stop chasing that, but chase righteousness. You understand? Begin to chase God by studying his word, by searching his word, by proving yourself worthy. Prove yourself with the word of God. 